Sometimes in life, we have to decide between different courses of action based on the information available. For example, when a patient comes to an emergency room, the doctor might have to decide how severe their injury is based on their vital signs. That's what the trauma score was developed to do. The trauma score has three components. Basically, the three components are how conscious the patient is, how much their blood is pumping, and how fast they're breathing. And each of these components is converted into a code value, a point, a number of points between zero and four. And these number of points are then used to decide how severe the injury is. So for example, if we look at how fast the patient is breathing, that's a number, how many breaths per minute. And if the number is greater than 29, then in that category, the patient gets three points. So in order to compute the trauma score, we have to compare numbers and map those numbers to numbers of points. So how do we compare numbers in the beginning student language? There are operations for comparing numbers, and they go by the names you might expect. For example, if I want to see if a number, um, let's say 35, is greater than 29, maybe I'm breathing 35 times per minute, I can use an operation that's just greater than. And the result of this operation is hashtag true or just true for short. If I use a different breathing rate, like 20, then it is not greater than 29, so I get false. Now, true and false are booleans. In fact, they are the only booleans. A boolean is just one of these two values. It's either true or false. True and false are values that you may or may not have seen before. They are the only booleans. Sometimes when we type them in, we don't put the hashtag in front, and that's still OK. So greater than is an operation that takes two numbers and returns a boolean. And there are many other operations that return booleans. For example, we could compare numbers with not just greater than, but also less than equals, we could see if they're greater than equal or less than equal. These are all operations that take numbers and return a boolean. Another thing that you might want to know is that uh, these operations actually can take more than two numbers. For example, if I want to see whether a number is between 10 and 29, I could use the less than equal operation, but instead of passing just two numbers to the less than or equal operation, I could pass it three inputs. And that would just mean whether 20, for example, is between 10 and 29. So that's how to compare numbers and get booleans back. Now, how do we use these booleans, trues and falses, that we get back from numeric comparisons to make decisions? Well, that's what conditionals are for. So let's say that we have a respiratory rate, maybe it's 20, that we want to make a decision based on. In fact, maybe we want to map this rate into a coded value following this table. We can use this operation in the beginning student language called COUND. COUND stands for conditional, and here's how it works. Every time we use COUND, we have to make a bunch of cases. I'm using spur brackets to indicate a case. You could also use round parentheses. These are actually equivalent. I'm just using spur brackets to emphasize that they are cases. Okay, so in the table, I'm counting five cases. So in the count, I also need to have five cases. Okay. In each case, I need to have both a question and the an answer. What do I mean by a question and the an answer? A question is something that's a boolean. So any way to get a boolean, for example, comparing numbers will do. 
Here, we should have five questions corresponding to the five kinds of respiratory rates. The first case is if the respiratory rate is between 10 and 29. That's a boolean. The second case if, is if the respiratory rate is greater than 29, and so on and so forth. So those are the questions. The answers are just what to do, what to produce as a result, if that's the first question that produces true. So what happens is if the rate is between 10 and 29, then the answer is 4. OK, so that's what a count looks like. We can now run this program to decide what the rate 20 maps to. It maps to 4. If we change the rate to, let's say, 35, then the points become 3. One way to understand how count works better is by running this kind of expression through the stepper, which is found in the upper right corner of Dr. Racket. So let's see how the stepper deals with this expression. So the first thing that happens is the stepper looks up what the rate is, what RR is, it's 35. And then we perform a numeric comparison to discover that it is not in the first range, it's not between 10 and 29. So we could get rid of that first case. Because the question side of the first case is false, we could skip it. And that's what's happening in this step. Next, we consider the second case, now the first case. The question refers to the rate again, so we have to look up the rate again. It is 35. Now we have to compare 35 against 29. It turns out that it is greater than 29, so we get true. And if the question is true, then we pick that answer, in other words, 3. And that's how we get this final answer, 3. 